penniless and without a chance, there's misery in Africa. The result are rebellions, terror, and flows of refugees. Niger is a transit country for millions of migrants and a hotspot in the fight for Africa's future. Education, roads, electricity, everything's missing. Electricity is often the foundation for many things. 50 years of development policy didn't alleviate poverty. A German African startup wants to do the impossible now with a revolutionary business idea. We can move a lot with very simple solutions from Germany. At Africa Green Tech, people are busy. The new startup company builds solar power containers for Africa. How are you guys? Hi. Thorsten Schreiber is the company's founder and a visionary. With his startup, he wants to change the world. Today, we will ship the container to Niger. We still need to check the satellite connection, then we'll wrap things up. The truck will arrive at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And off we go. Home of the new company in Heinburg in Hesse. In the shadow of an old power plant, Africa Green Tech is driving innovative technologies forward. Engineer Lorenz Brellochs will accompany the container to Africa. This special model can supply hundreds of families with electricity far away from the grid. Schreiber wants to supply three million people with clean solar power within 10 years. His goal is an energy turnaround in Africa. Not with well-meant gifts from rich Europe, as German development aid has always done up to now, but with a business model that sees even the poorest people as customers. Schreiber wants to sell them electricity, with both sides benefiting from this idea. Without any development funds, the startup financed the first containers through crowdfunding, the raising of funds from many small investors via the internet. Things went very fast with the first container. We had the money within three days. With the current financing, it takes six to eight weeks. Such a high-tech system costs 200,000 euros. It not only brings electricity, but also the internet to the villages. Hi, baby. How are things? I brought you something to drink. Is everything okay? Aida Schreiber is Thorsten's wife. She's from Mali and is the co-founder of Africa Green Tech. Through her, the former salesman for energy-saving lamps found his purpose in life. Now they promote their own product. She's Africa. She's Africa. I'm Green Tech. Everybody understands that. Yes, everybody knows the Germans build good machines and we Africans have a lot of sunshine. This is how we bring those two nice things together. Nicely put. Thanks. Yeah. During their visits to Ida's home country, Mali, Thorsten Schreiber got to know and love Africa. The couple have three children and travel a lot. In 2014, the couple was invited to visit Mali's largest diesel power plant that supplies the capital Bamako with electricity. It's an inefficient polluter from the 1960s. For Schreiber, this was a decisive turning point and the moment when he decided to do something. The people were so proud of their power plant, which was perhaps only 10% energy efficient. That thing devoured 170,000 litres of diesel fuel per day, but it was the trigger for our project. We have our new intern with us today. Welcome. The idea of the couple turned into an award-winning startup with 35 comrades in arms. But so far, even the Schreiber family never dared to go visit Niger, the poorest country in the world. The village of Amalul is a pilot project, which will be followed by many more containers. It's also a financial feat. The Schreiber family hoped to receive funding from the German development aid. We receive many awards, but when it comes to getting money for our project in a country like Niger, we get rejections, one after another. It annoys me because this is a promising project. We developed a great product and we really want to change something. 
Menschen davon abhalten zu fliehen. We want to stop people from Niger from leaving their country and hope that Germany would support our solution with development aid, but this isn't the case apparently. Aber ja, es soll nicht so sein. But after years of rejections, a grant was finally approved after we finished our video shoot. What a wonderful surprise. Great, we did it. Before their departure, there's only one thing left. We baptize thee, Naomi. Naomi. Six months of hard work lie behind the team. They all denied themselves high salaries. Africa Green Tech is a social business. It's not only about profit, but also about social values. Every 40-foot container doesn't only provide electricity, it also brings hope for development to Africa. The village of Amalul is already waiting. The solar container is transported by ship for three weeks. It's the easiest way. Much more difficult is the cross-country transportation. Niger is a landlocked country on the southern edge of the Sahara. There are more sand tracks than roads. Amalul is situated in a little oasis between two dunes. Finally, the container reaches the village. The villagers are ready. For a long time, nobody really believed that the Germans would really come. Now, the joy is great. Ida and the Africa Green Tech team are happy too. Half the village lines the track to welcome the solar pioneers. Even the local women's cooperative is here. Despite the warm welcome, soldiers secure the celebration. It's a must for all foreigners. Kidnappings are a welcome source of income in destitute Niger. Nevertheless, the Schreibers were determined to come here. Niger is the least developed country in the world, which is why we want to prove that the system works. If it works where the conditions are the worst, then of course it will work where things are better. But first, however, it's a tough call. The driveway to the village square is a bottleneck. Several mud houses almost have to give way to the Colossus on wheels. After a lot of back and forth, however, it works. You better reverse and then go in that direction. But the loose desert sand is treacherous. Schreiber doubts whether they can get the container off the truck at all. We just have to see if the lifting system works because the village unfortunately hasn't prepared the place well. It isn't leveled, so that we'll probably have to do that today. But instead the wheels are spinning. It's stop and go for hours. All attempts to put the solar power system in a level place seem to be futile. Torsten is strung up. In the evening, it becomes clear they need a plan B. A new location, 100 meters away. But what looks like abandoned desert sand has its owners. The team has to wait while village chief Musa clarifies the property claims. There is also another problem. The village is ready to cut down the trees. We have to sacrifice them, unfortunately, because otherwise the power system won't work because it's in the shade. We don't want to cut down the trees. That's not part of our project. The villagers suggested it, but we refused. We can do it another way. Some bushes are cut down instead of the trees. Suddenly, everything happens very quickly. Within 10 minutes, the location is prepared. The first victim of the unplanned land seizure is a chameleon, but it's resettled. <laughs> Finally, the path is cleared for the mission Electricity for Amalul. Improvisation made it possible. Schreiber was aware of this. This is Africa. 
Amalul needs clean energy. Engineer Lorenz Brelochs is fascinated by this sooty diesel engine. It's a museum piece. Diesel is extremely expensive throughout sub-Saharan Africa, and the transport routes are long. One kilowatt hour costs the equivalent of one euro. It's unaffordable for most people and a great obstacle to development. A tour of the village quickly reveals why so many migrants want to go to Europe. There are hardly any jobs. The living conditions are archaic. Women in particular spend a lot of time working hard. It's time that they could spend on other things. Electricity would change all that. Electricity is often the beginning of many, many things. You can run small machines, you can run a pump, you have light, energy for ventilation or refrigeration. You can refine your agricultural products. Electricity is the foundation for all that. The next market day, it becomes apparent who could benefit from electricity. It's a good opportunity for the Schreibers to attract customers, as they don't want to provide their electricity for free. 600 families live in Amalul. 8,000 people without electricity in scorching heat. Diesel engines rattle everywhere. The electrical cables here are often life-threatening. The hairdresser can't really imagine what solar power actually means, but he still agrees to everything. <laughs> the blacksmith also wants electricity for an electrically operated grindstone. We just have to go to the market. There are potential customers everywhere. Of course, it's not that easy. For most people, the solar power system is some kind of UFO that landed in their village. Nevertheless, the success of the project depends on the people in Amalul accepting the technology and, as a village community, taking responsibility for its preservation. Fish in the desert, a snack from a nearby pond. An award for the work, right? Meanwhile, engineer Brelochs is wrestling for every inch. The 40-foot steel colossus must be exactly in balance. It's a fight against the sand of the dunes, which is won hours later. The aliens are still of interest for the audience. The infirmary was financed in 2010 by the KFW, the German Reconstruction Loan Corporation. That's why the people here are particularly pleased about the Germans, as the place lacks everything. Masahati Lantu is the only doctor here. He has to deal with the shortages. Malaria and warm diseases are widespread in Amalul, but medication is only available in the city, two hours away. Without electricity, emergencies at night become dangerous. Two weeks ago, little Mohammed was born in the glow of a torch. Without my torch, I wouldn't have seen anything at all. It was very difficult. The birth took a long time. I got very tired as I had to switch the lamp from my left shoulder to the right and back again. I needed my hands free. I was really exhausted when we finally delivered the child. Luckily, everything went well. The hospital still has an old gas-powered refrigerator. It fails again and again. Some of the cooling elements can't maintain the temperature anymore, so the few available drugs go bad and can't be administered any longer. The German loan corporation had put a large solar system on the roof of the hospital, but it stopped working three years ago. Nobody took care of the repair. It's a typical African problem. Thorsten Schreiber checks on the system. The infirmary is equipped with eight solar panels that are basically still in working order. But the pigeons always shit on the panels, which is why they can't provide enough power for the infirmary. 
I explained to the people that they need to keep the panels clean and maybe put some spikes up there that deter the pigeons from sitting on there so that there's sufficient power coming from the panels. We'll take care of the tech downstairs. Finally, the contents of the container are revealed. Precision work is required again. Solar power plants like Thorsten Schreiber's bring hope to Africa's rural population. Poor countries lack the money to move expensive power grids to remote areas. Only 1% of all villages in Niger have electricity and therefore a chance for development. In addition, each container saves 50 tons of CO2 per year. The project is funded by Schreiber and his partners. The costs have to be recouped over 10 years by selling the electrical power. Schreiber calculated that he can offer his solar power 50% cheaper than the expensive diesel power. Each container has to earn around 40,000 euros a year in order to be profitable. The calculation is on point. However, the system won't generate any profits before 25 or more plants are in operation. It's a balancing act with an uncertain ending. But first, it's time for the topping out ceremony. The writing material is a goat pine. That's how the pens are here. <laughs> For each of their three children, the Schreibers want to provide a million people with electricity. <laughs> Under the village Acacia, things become serious again. Job interviews are on the agenda. A technician is wanted. I read that you did an internship in Gunzenhausen. Unlike traditional development aid, Africa Green Tech is dependent on sustainability and cannot afford blackouts like in the infirmary. Wufai Abdul Kadir seems to be the right person. Okay. Welcome to the team. <laughs> Skill shortages are a key problem in Niger and in many other developing countries. This becomes apparent at this industrial ruin. What a beautiful relic. It's ancient. Amalul had a diesel-powered electrical grid before. It's a fuel guzzler. 200 litres in three days. That's 65 litres per day for 160 households. Improper maintenance wiped out the monster. Village electrician Ibrahim had reacted incorrectly when a short circuit occurred. It happened at 10 o'clock at night. He poured water on it and it was over with the electrical power. Ibrahim is now also supposed to take care of the new power plant. There are no other experts available. Amalul already paid for electricity before, which was one of the reasons for Torsten Schreiber to come here. Can we come in? The former best customer lives right next door. Usman Labo has two wives, two houses, and therefore twice the demand. What happens when one woman needs more power than the other, like when she wants a fridge? I have many things. For example, one TV is here and the other is there, in the other house. Okay. So he basically purchases everything twice. If he buys a TV, he buys for both of them. That's fair. <laughs> the social order in Muslim Amalul is clearly defined. Men decide and the women obey. But electricity could soon change these dependencies. Ida and Africa Green Tech support this issue. <laughs> We need refrigerators so that we can sell cold water and tapioca, and we will make ice cream off the baobab tree. There are many things we could sell at the market. We're definitely going to make money. Every single one of these small businesses is a big step towards more self-determination.
Traditional craftsmanship is still dominant in Amalul. There is brick production, for example. The small village pond is well filled at the end of the rainy season. Clay from its shore and millet spelts are used to make bricks that are dried in the sun. All of Amalul is built from them. Yay. Thorsten Schreiber also needs bricks. A wall is needed to protect the cables on the container from hungry goats. How many bricks can they produce in one week? It takes about 2,000 to 4,000 bricks. The wall should be 1 to 1.5 meters high. How long would it take them to deliver the 4,000 bricks here? It'll take them about two weeks to get it all done. How much do they charge for one brick? 50 francs safer. How much is it if I take 4,000? It's a fixed price. That equals 8 euro cents per brick. That's clear. Yeah. All right, we'll discuss it with the team and give him the order afterwards. The brick workers already benefit from the Germans' presence, even without electricity. Others would have to invest in equipment first. Abu Bakr Zakari grows vegetables like many people here. Only if the villagers have an income, they won't emigrate. On the other hand, only a certain income creates the possibility for migration. It's a dilemma. Abu Bakr is worried. More than 100 people in the village grow vegetables, but they have no money to connect the power grid with their gardens. We're willing to pay them back, but we need time. Some need a month, others a year, then it should work. The most important thing for the people here is a safe future for their children. Village chief Musa faces similar problems. Everybody is happy about the electricity, but nobody really knows how they should deal with it. They also need to wrap their heads around the fact that Torsten Schreiber doesn't give away the electrical power for free, but sets conditions as an investor. They are willing to take responsibility for the investment, but what do they have to do? To supply the whole village of Amalul with electricity, 12 kilometers of grid and another container would be needed. This means that for now only 30% of the village will be supplied with the first power system. We all have to see if everybody pays. If the electrical power is available in time, that the plant isn't damaged, that the villagers take care of it. When trust is established, we will invest in the expansion of the network with another plant. We already establish contact with various microfinancing institutions so that we can help people to finance the containers. Then things will move forward in the village. It's clear to everyone that they are dependent on each other if something good is supposed to come out for both parties in the end. But the uncertainty remains. The plant also has a small power grid that is being built by a company from neighboring Mali. They have been operating electricity grids there for 20 years. There are no such specialized companies in Niger. The sustainable energy supply that Africa Green Tech envisions is a strenuous effort and a big risk for years to come, as the project could also fail. Of course, this is on the Schreiber's minds too, but they keep it to themselves. They want to build bridges, motivate, create the seemingly impossible. But it will only be possible if they remain positive and don't show any doubts and if they can enthuse others with their vision. This includes the Africa Green Tech team, but also the people in Amalul. 
The satellite system is high-tech and up-to-date. It allows the villagers to stay in contact with the company headquarters in Germany and gives them access to the internet. The engineers are accustomed to all this. But how enthusiastic will the husbands of these women react once the internet changes their mindset? What will happen once the military escort that protects the insulation has left? What will happen when the villagers' traditional way of life is confronted with completely different norms of behavior? The village chief and imam provide the guidelines of life here. Even young girls veil. Amalul is a religious village with many children and little education. What if jihadists from nearby Mali take offense at the technology or want to use it for themselves? We could at least witness when the jihadists hijack our facility, but at the moment we don't assume it. We're on a peace mission and don't get involved with religion, so I don't think we will upset anyone. This may be true for the moment. It's hard to promise things in this unstable part of the world. It's a bet on the future, fueled by the belief in the power of change that will come through the availability of clean power. This faith could indeed move mountains. One week later, the plant is ready. Even ministers from the distant capital come for its initiation. How are you, Your Excellency? For the Africa Green Tech team, political support is important. It depends on the goodwill of the government whether the company receives another license for the installation of further solar containers and whether the Schreiber family will come one step closer to their dream of providing three million people with electricity. 500 villages are to follow Amalul in the next 10 years, according to the government of Niger. But there is a lack of money and know-how. Africa Green Tech could provide both, a profitable investment and a matter of the heart. Our biggest gain is that we can make thousands of people happy, that they sing and dance for us. This feeling is hard to describe. With very little, we're able to give many people a future and promote further development. Yes. After hours of glistening sunshine, the batteries are charged. Here we go. In the evening, most children in the village see artificial light for the first time in their lives. Even if the investment won't pay off in the end, it is already worth the effort now. <laughs>